。好的，呃，大家呃。看到了哈，我们的 Steven 已经到我们的那个平台上面来了。呃，我先会说一下，就是说为什么我们今天会做这个讲座哈。呃，因为我们在咨询的过程里面的话呢，很多的家长会问到我们，哎，呃，我的孩子和其他的孩子呃相比哈，这个 GPA、ACT 都是非常高的。然后呢，同时的话，体育、音乐、呃，舞蹈有各种各样的特长。那我的孩子如何和其他的孩子相比，能有一定的？我们就说拉开一定的差距哈，我的孩子如何能在这个申请的过程里面 stands out 脱颖而出？呃，其实您的孩子呃最主要的就是说呃和其他的孩子相比的话呢，如何能在我们说的这个 top 三十的名校的申请过程中呢，能拔得头筹哈，就是取得先机。最主要的一个点就是说，你在这一个你的这个 academic 的 redirection 方面有没有一定的深挖和有一定的钻研？那这一个 academic 方面的兴趣和你的这一个能力如何来体现的话，那就说到了我们今天。的这个主题了 ，research program， 也就是我们中文说的科研项目。呃，好的，那我现在就把这个时间交给我们的 Steven。Hi, Steven. Uh, now I give the floor to you. I briefly intro introduce to this topic and your background.、Yeah. So I think you can, you know, uh, elaborate a little bit more about uh Luminia and as as well as your background. Um, perfect. Well, um,、uh, 大家好啊， uh, 我我先不说中文，因为我我。高中的时候在台北当过那个交换生，会讲一点点中文，但是，呃，为了不麻烦大家，那我就就就说英文吧，就可能讲比较流利一点。嗯、um, ，Well, perfect. Well, it's so great to see and and talk to everyone today. Thank you so much. I'll yeah, I'll be speaking English because, uh, uh, it will be a bit uh easier for me. So, um,、uh, but of course,、uh, happy to answer any questions. Um. The today I want to talk a little bit about、uh, the concept of building a spike in your application. This is a really important concept that most people who are thinking really strategically about getting into top schools are going to ultimately end up with this concept, which is saying, "How do I showcase that I am uniquely good in one way、uh, compared to other other candidates? How do I stand out in one specific dimension of my life?"、Um, in my application. Compared to other applicants, I think this is particularly important. By the way,、um, for students coming from、um, like you know, the Chinese or Chinese American community, because you're kind of up against a, a really competitive pool, and、um, you know there's a there's a, a tendency for for applicants to be perceived as looking similar. So you want to make sure how can I think about myself as a you know very distinguished applicant. So anyways, I'll talk a little bit about that today and talk a bit about how research and our joint program with Ivy Compass. You know, could be helpful, but I really want to talk about just the the mindset of like, okay, how do I think about myself as an individual applicant first, and why why that matters. I mean, if you go to the next、um, next slide, that'd be great. So here's a quick background on、um, on on myself. So I'm I'm Stephen. I'm one of the co-founders of of Lumiere.、Um, quick background on myself. So I went to I I went to high school in Taiwan. Grew up mainly in the U.S.、Um, I was at Harvard's undergrad, where I studied. Um, statistics, machine learning, data science. I then worked for a couple of years at McKinsey and Company, and I came back to Harvard to start a PhD back at、um, back at the business school. And、um, for me, my I'm really passionate about about research. You know, I, I think anyone who who does stuff in education has has some connection. And for me, it's really comes from my family. My my dad's a professor. I grew up surrounded by conversations with him around、um, you know why is it that people act the way he does? He's a business school or psychology researcher. Um, his dad never got to study college because of Holocaust survivor, but his dad, who's featured in the bottom left corner, was also a very prominent researcher in Germany. And actually, my family emigrated to the U.S. because、um, my great grandfather Fritz Kahn knew Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein wrote him a letter、um, to help escape the Holocaust and、um, uh, the danger in Germany in the 20s and 30s, and ultimately moved to the U.S., which is why I'm American and、uh, and not and not German today.、Um, But this is all to say that research is something that's been really important in in my life. I first, my co-founder and I met actually doing a research program while at Harvard's undergrads at the business school, and for me, it kind of launched me on a journey of thinking about, okay, how can we get more students involved in research, and in particular, how can we help students learn about their own passions and build this this spike, which I'll talk a bit about in a second, in、um, in in the admission admission process. So you can go to the next next slide, just a bit on myself. And and our program. Sorry. So let's talk a little bit about the admission process in in the U.S. And the admission process in the U.S. is is very 
unique um, uh, as compared to other, you know, other other uh, countries and other other markets. Now they're you know that's changing over time as as um, universities in like places like Singapore and Hong Kong begin to mimic or Canada begin to mimic um, the the traits of the U.S. But the U.S. has kind of historically been a pretty distinct place and. The distinct thing around U.S. admissions is that they are really thinking about admissions from a, we call a holistic perspective. The idea there is that the admission office is tasked with this really important um, act, which is to select the next group of students who will then go into the school, be successful at the school, and then ultimately go out and do things in, in the world. And for highly selective institutions like Harvard or Stanford or places like UC Berkeley versus Michigan, essentially these institutions are taking a bet on these students. They're trying to assess, okay, which students are gonna be the strongest in both doing the work itself, but then are gonna go on and be successful beyond the school itself. So that's an important mindset. So the US admissions, it's not saying I wanna pick the very uh, best student. That's not the goal. It's actually to pick the best group of students that then will go on and be successful long term so they can bring prestige, money, donations, whatever to uh, back to the school. And so with that mindset, the U.S. institutions are not just looking for strong academics. So academics are a big part of it. So there are really two big elements of, of admission. The first element is the academics. And so if you're looking at, let's say, just top 30 schools in, in the US, they expect for you to be very strong academically. That means that you have you know, good test scores, good GP, I'll talk about that in a second. But the second piece is that they want students who represent something interesting and add something specific to their class because an admission office is not making a decision one by one. An admission office, especially for these top 30 schools, is thinking about the entire group of students mm -hmm. and how they can um, pick a group of students that is broad and interesting and fills up all of the different parts of the school. So that means that they need to pick people who are you know, on their golf team. They need to pick students who are going to be taking the most advanced math class. They need to pick students who are interested in languages. Like at Harvard, for example, I didn't realize this until I went, that every year there is one white guy that speaks Chinese. And I just happened to be that one guy who spoke Chinese in my year. You know, I didn't realize that at the time, but I was kind of checking a box that there was like that one kid who did that thing. And so, you know, it, it, this is all to say that institutions may not have explicit quotas, but they do have uh, groups that they need to fill out. And so they're looking for, uh, for the group. So that means the profile, who you are as an individual, you know, what depth you bring really, really matters when you're applying. So I mean, if you go to the next, next slide. Um, so, so here we go. So in terms of academics, that's broken into, I think, three main areas. That's your grades, that's your test scores, that's your, what we would call um, your next level um, uh, academic scores. And then the second piece is um, your profile. This is like your leadership, your experiences, and the projects that, um, that you've taken. So we can go to the next, next slide. So um, that's okay. So if you are looking at a, um, an applicant, essentially the one of the things that you want to be thinking about and that um, that institutions are looking at is to say, we really want someone who is going to be deeply successful in one specific area. And just to give you an example of this. So in the admission report, um, you know, recently, um, Students for Fair Admissions, which is a, a group, um, essentially like an advocacy group, has sued Harvard in order to, um, yeah, so um, who are uh, essentially suing Harvard in order to say like, hey, you know, Asian Americans, some groups are being discriminated against in, um, in the admission process. So what they forced Harvard to do was to release their admission files, which showed which of the, um, what are the actually processes that Harvard takes in order to assess people. And so, they assess people on a couple of different characteristics. One is called academic, and they rank students from four to one. And so four is not definitely not gonna get in. Three is like, okay. Two is like, they have a fighting chance to get in. And one is like, this is a very, very, very strong candidate. They're only about 
40 or 50 students who are you know, rated one often in, um, in, in many areas, though about a, like a few hundred when it comes to academics. If you are a 4.0 GPA, if you are a valedictorian of your school, if you got a perfect on your SAT, you will be ranked by Harvard a two. So even if you're the very best person in your school, you'll be ranked a two. You won't even be ranked a one. So how do you become a one? You have to be a one if you're showing some extraordinary level of ability or contribution in your field at the high school level. So that's what we call a very, very deep spike. Someone who's gone very deep into one area and is able to showcase, yeah, I'm, I know this area extremely well. Many families, I think, make the mistake of thinking of, okay, I need my student to be good at everything. They need to be the best at piano. You know, they need to be rocking it and they maybe just need to do a sport, good at golf. They need to also be doing, you know, all these different APs. When the reality is that the university is looking for, like I mentioned, you know, that, that white guy who speaks Chinese or whatever it is, you know, that person who's the amazing viola player, someone who's going really deep in one area, some student who really knows a lot about genetics, they're really looking for for that depth. So you can go to the next slide. And so when you're thinking about building a spike, there's essentially two main areas that you could be uh, looking at. So the first is the impact. So how does this uh, uh, impact people you know, broadly? And the second is um, the, the uniqueness, like how interesting or distinct is it? You can go to the next slide. Yeah. So impact is uh, if what you've created is recognized by others and has an impact. In the case of like research, for example, or in case of any activity, there's really two means to do this. One way is called market traction. It means that people are using it, people are reading it. You know, if it um, you know, millions of people are your followers on um, on TikTok or Instagram, that shows you have a lot of traction. Clearly, people care about what you're doing. The other way you can you can have impact is by having credentials. So if you're published, if you are uh, if you have won a competition, this is all an external organization saying like, great, this is you clearly doing something that has, uh, has impact. So mission officers look for what you've done and are trying to assess impact. You go to the next slide. Um, oh, um, yes, yeah, perfect. So the next one is uniqueness. So then you wanna think about how distinct is what you're doing. So how unique is the spike that you've that you've built and there you're looking for something that's essentially going to because a mission officer is essentially looking at a student's application and they're saying okay what um what what is this like is this is this interesting they're they're a real human often they're like 25 year olds who study anthropology like just like give a, a broad <laughs> overview and so they're looking at the the profile of the candidate they're looking at their essays and saying, like, okay, how how interesting is this? how unique is this so when you're building something, you want to be building something that's as unique as possible. Okay, you can go to the next slide. So research is really unique here because it both allows you to build a spike that's both academic and is about your personal story. So academically, again, I talk about Harvard. If you want to get to the one level that you, you have to do research, actually, you can't not do research unless you're winning a international medal in like physics where you are at the very top level. So if you want to showcase that I am really, really um, interested and I have experience in this field, research is a very important way for you to do that because you can say, hey, like I'm not only interested in math, but I've done research with math, you know, from a professor or a researcher at Caltech, for example. But research is also interesting because it can be used as part of your personal profile. So when you're talking about you're writing an essay, when you're explaining why is it you're interested in what you are, who you are, Research can be another thing as an extracurricular activity where you can say, hey, you know, I'm actually genuinely interested in this area because I've done research. This has, you know, made me uh, feel, you know, very connected to this area. We've had students, for example, um, who have uh, won competitions like MIT Think, and they did it because they were interested in Alzheimer's because they had a parent or they had a, a grandparent who'd been affected by Alzheimer's. So their research was actually very connected to their personal story, which again, built this spike, this level of depth that the student had. You go to the next slide. There are a couple of different types of doing research. You know, today we're going to talk about our joint program with Ivy Compass, which is, I think, really exciting for, um, for a lot of families. This involves, uh, you know, different ways to do research, um, which would be probably in a virtual first setting, but oftentimes this involves quantitative research, qualitative research, or doing uh, a literature review. You can go to the next slide. Um, so there are a couple of different ways to do research. Um, we'll talk, of course, about um, 
this joint program at the end, but just to say that there are other ways to do it. Um, and we can explain about you know, why some ways might be better than others and, and what setting. So a structured research program, these are programs like RSI, Primes, our joint program together is an example of this type of joint program where students can do research with a mentor. They're building their own output. They're creating something distinctly for themselves. Another way to do research is to work as a research assistant. This means you're often reaching out to professors by yourself, doing cold outreach, trying to find someone you can help out with their project. It often involves doing a smaller project with a much bigger whole. And then finally, there's some individual independent research opportunities. Usually this involves um, something at school. So this could be the AP capstone or the IB extended essay. These are different ways that you might, you might do, do research. You go to the next pitch. So structured research programs are a, um, you know, interesting because they essentially provide the entire structure for students to do research. For most first-time researchers, I think this is, is usually the right move, but of course not for all. Um, what this usually means, for example, you know, RSI or Lumiere, or whatever it might be, is that you're working with a research mentor who's then helping to guide you to build your own individual project. And that individual project ultimately might lead to publication, it might lead to a competition, but it's a student's project. So when admission officer is looking at what they've done, they can be very clear, okay, the student's the one who's did it. They didn't just tag along with a professor that their parent knew and then just do a little bit of work and then put their name on. It's truly the student's work. So that's a, that's a big value of the structured research program. Most students find it very hard in my experience to do research on their own without having someone guide them and help them figure out, okay, what is it that, um, that, we, that we need to do? You go to the next slide. Another opportunity is to be a research assistant. This usually involves reaching out to uh, faculty members, maybe close by or maybe in other schools. Um, it can be difficult because you have to reach out to usually in the order of 50 to 100 faculty members to get one position. Um, and then often the work that you're doing is more uh, manual. So this is another, I think there's opportunities there, but also some, some limitations. You go to the next slide. This is how you reach out. I won't, I won't go with this. I think, I think you can just skip these slides. Step one, you reach out, step two, you send cold outreach. And then finally, there's individual independent research. So finally, this is like the, I think the most difficult way um, to do it. Very difficult thing for most students because it's very hard for, research is about being at the very edge of a field, about being innovative in a field. So it's hard for novices, for, for new people to define new research questions um, and ultimately get it. So this is an opportunity, but I think it's relatively rare for most students to do. Okay, I think you go to the next slide. Great. So I'm going to pass to, to Minru. I just to just to kind of recap, we talked about how the admission process is about selecting a group of students, not individual students. How admission officers are looking for students who have a very unique spike to then fill out that admission office. And then how research is a pretty effective way to build a spike, though it's not the only way. So I'm going to talk a little bit, pass to Minru, talk about the research program itself, and then how students might get involved um, in, in doing research. Hello, 其实也是大概十年前吧，经历经历过了美文申请，然后去了一所 关于我们的一些numbers，这个是去去年不加上，我们去年暑假的一个呃一个一个data一个数据，大概我们有七百多位学生最后参与了项目，但是我们有两千一百多位申请者，所以我们是一个selective research program，呃，这一点可能跟大家应该会比较熟知的pioneer比较像，所以我们不是一个只要学生呃交钱就能上的一个项目，呃。这样做的原因呢，也是希望在long term 的这个在长长长久的可能十年内，呃，可以跟 actually ready for this program. 
。然后目前呢，跟我们合作的导师呢有七百五十多位，呃，来自各个。不同的领域，然后 cover 了个很非常广的不同的这个呃 topics of research。这个一会儿我会详细讲一下我们导师的 background。然后呢，我们的学生呢也是非常的 diverse， 大概来自百呃百分之这个呃来来自三十七个国家。中国或者是华裔的学生呢，大概占到百分之二十左右。所以在项目中的学生也不是说嗯。呃旁边的同学也都是中国学生，可能跟中国的一些这个 local research programs， 呃那样，而是他们有机会跟来自不同国家，包括一些 underdeveloped countries， 比如说啊呃,呃这个这个非非洲国家呀，然后印度啊，嗯呃,呃一些东南亚的国家一起啊、呃、的学生一起去呃有一个这样的 research 的 journey。嗯、um, ，另外也提一点，就是我们有给到 financial aid 给到呃、uh, underprivileged 但是非常呃优秀的学生的。去年我们也有是给到十万加美金，呃的呃这个 financial aid， 所以呃也是一个我们试图去做的提供这个公平 access 的一个方式。然后简单说一下我们 mentors 的 background。我们 mentors 大部分都是这个 senior PhD 和 junior faculties， 所以他们的年龄呢，大概会在呃三十二二十七岁到三十五岁左右，是我们呃这个这个 deliberately 会选选的一 group group of full time researchers。因为 Steven 和我们另外一个 founder Duva， 他们俩当时呢，呃，在哈佛的时候也有自己去 mentor 学生，所以他们认为跟学生有更近的这个年龄的。呃，年龄年龄更近，更能够 relate to 学生。然后呢，同时作为 full time researcher 和一个呃，没有像一个 full time 这个 professor senior professor 那么忙的一个一个角色吧，也能跟学生有更多的这种呃一对一的 interactive 的真的切实的嗯、呃、一对一的这个交流的机会。所以呃，我们的这个 research 我们的 mentor 主要是来自这个 group。那他们的 background 呢，主要都是 top twenty 的 U.S. schools， 呃，还有这个我们有一些英国的导师，但主要是 from Oxford 和 Cambridge。然后呃，我来详细讲一下我们 offer 的三个项目。嗯，第一个项目呢就是这个 basic individual research program。这个项目呢是一般给这个八年级或者是九年级的学生，九年级到十年级吧，就是。Younger younger students 是一个 to explore research 的一个机会，所以这个项目它的时长是三个月，然后一共是九个跟导师的 sessions， 呃，最后它的 output 呢是一个十五到二十页的 hardcore 的 research paper， 呃，还有同时呢，学生一他如果完成了这个呃 final paper 的话，一定会收到一封 evaluation letter， 是由我们导师亲亲自撰写的，嗯、呃，然后一般也会有他们自己的。邮箱去发出这个呃是没有问题，嗯、呃，当然我们也会跟导师在写 evaluation letter letter 的时候呢，给一些 prompts， 所以这个 letter 一般会有两页长，然后非常的详尽，然、啊、后对学生呃去申请，然后包括去呃告诉招生官这个这个项目的真实性和呃。有 supervise 的这个 fact 是很有帮助的，呃，当然呢，也学生也可以要呃这个 recommendation letter。我们大概向导师要 recommendation letter 的学生有百分之七十能拿到，所以呢，这个也不是百 one one hundred guarantee。但是呃，如果学生 really put into efforts， recommendation letter 也是呃问题不大的。第二个项目呢，就是这个 Premier Research Publication Program， 它的呃第一个 level 的 output 跟第我们第一个项目是一样的，也是一个十五到二十页的呃 research paper。然后呢，我们在一般学生也会在前三个月内 finish， 在三个月内一般会有八七到八个 deadlines， 帮助学生呢去 make small progress， 然后 finish。At the end of the third month, 然后呢，剩下的这一个月呢，我们会帮助学生根据他的 research paper 的这个深度 topic， 呃，还有他的这个学科所在的学科去帮他选择一个适合他的 publication， 然后提交发表。然后这边想跟大家强调一下，就是一般呢，不根据不同的这个 publication 的这个 journal， 他们自己的呃处理时间呢。
给给给 decision 的时间会有点不一样，一般会有十一到四个月的呃一个 processing time。所以呢，我们推荐如果是呃大这个学生或者是大家觉得认为这个 publication 对于非常非常重要的话呢，希望是在十二年级暑假之前去上去来参与这个项目，这样保证学生能够在 ED 的时候用到这个 publication 的 results。第三个项目是那个 Lumia Lumia Research Fellowship Program， 可能选择这个项目的学生会稍微的偏少一点，百分之五到十的学生会选择这个项目。这个项目的时间更长程是六到十二个月，大概会有嗯三十个 session 跟 research mentor， 适合一些呃。非常非常非常优秀的学生，并且他他想要他他在参与想参与这个项目的时候，就会有一些比较具体的目标，比如说他参想参加这个 S F， 或者他想嗯、呃、在这个 The Concrete Review 上发表，或者是他想自己写一本自己的书，或者是他想参加甚至这个 Graduate 或者 Con Industry Level 的这个 Conference， 比如说 People 呃、uh, Fortune People Analytics Conference， 嗯、呃、这样子的一些目标，所以嗯、呃、我们给了一个这样子的选项，有因为这些这些。呃，不管是比赛也好啊，还是期刊也好，他们本身的要求就非常的高，所以呢，给到学生一个更长程的 mentorship 的这个呃选择。嗯、呃，大家有什么问题可以就发在 chat 里边，然后我们就一起去 address。除了跟呃导师的 session 中呢，这三个项目都包括了 individual with 呃 sessions with writing coach， 这个也是一对一的。然后我们所有的 writing coach 都是 native speaker from 啊、呃、这个常青藤学校，所以这个资源也是非常非常的好。嗯，然后第二，因为呃后面两个项目它涉及到呃 publication 啊或者 competition， 所以我们还有专门的这个 publication specialist 帮助学生去挑选，包括 navigate 呃的 navigate 去提交发表或者参与比赛的这些呃一些 logistic 的步骤。哦，嗯，然后呢，这边是我们的这个呃去年就是不是今年的申请啊，就是去年申请呃。参与过鲁面项目的学生，他对于他的这个大学申请的一个结果的调查，呃，这个整个这个调查呢是包包括了一百五十位参与过鲁面的学生，然后我们看到就是全球的学生啊，还是有非常非常多很 amazing 的这个呃呃 college admission results， 包括。这六位 Princeton 的学生中有三位都是我们的全奖的学生，所以我们也非常的高高兴看到学生有这样子的 achievement。然后呢，数因为我们是一个嗯 ，Steven 自己他是呃学 statistics， 所以我们在我我们公司中用到很多关于数据的东西。呃，我们根据这个 data 呢，大概能得出来的一个结论就是，嗯，参与过鲁米尔和没有参与过鲁米尔学生比他进入 Ivy League、Stanford。机会可能高一倍左右，啊、呃，这个当然不是说就是呃一定是鲁米尔呃帮他进入了这样子的呃这样子的名校，但是呢，因为他能够进入呃首先进入鲁米尔，并且能在顺利完成，嗯、呃，然后再有上我们导师和项目对他的加成，所以我们觉得呃这是一个 useful data to share， 嗯。然后呢，这里边有一些这个我们列举的一些 publication 和 competition 的例子，我再详细讲一下。可能，嗯、呃，有一些其他的，尤其是中国本土的，呃，这个 research program 也会说帮助学生去发表啊，或者是参加会议。我们的 strategy 跟他们可能会有一些不同，呃。大部分国内的一些 research program 可能会让学生交到一些这种 international conference， 就是可能这个含金量不会是特别的高。但是我们的 strategy 是希望，如果学生的 paper 它的质量和深度够了的话，我们会希望学生先去冲刺比较 competitive 的这种 journal， 比如说 under undergrad level of journal， 就比如说我们这边列的 LSC undergrad political review， 或者是 Cornell undergrad economic review 这一类的。呃、uh, ，journals。然后，如果学生没有进入到呃、uh, 这样子的 publication 呢，我们会免费帮学生再去提交到可能啊、uh, 更 competitive 一点的 high school level journal， 然后或者是一些 backup journals。但是我们不希望学生一开始就是去嗯去去去交一个比较没有含金量的一个一个一个呃拿到一个比较没有含金量的 external validation。呃，对，这边也也想提一点，因为刚才 Steven 也说到了，就是呃，怎么去 build 这个呃 spike， 其中有一点就是要得要要拿到这个嗯、呃、credential credential， 除了比如说我们 mentor background， 然后我们项目给的呃 certificate 之外呢，我们也跟这个 UCSC Extension School 有一个合作，嗯、呃。
。所以学生如果呃参加完这个项目，并且顺利提交了 final paper， 且他的 final paper 得到了一个呃我们这边嗯、呃、pass 这样的一个成绩的话，他能得到这个 UCSD Extension School 的一个嗯、呃、三个 credits。所以 another way 嗯、呃、告诉招生官这个项目的真实性和嗯、呃、它的难对难度的一种认证。嗯，最后呢，想跟大家说一下，就是我们的这个 cohort 一年大概有呃一年一年是有四个 cohort， 所以是学生任何时间提交都可以。那我们最近的这个 cohort 呢，就是 summer cohort， 然后呢，因为 summer 的 application application 的人数非常非常的多，所以我们有设置这种的这个三个 deadlines， 呃，包括还有一个 summer two， 主要针对可能亚洲本土的一些学生。呃，那最近的这个 deadline 其实就是明天，就是这个 regular admission one April 呃四月十六号。但是因为我们跟 Ivy Compass 有这个嗯、呃、比较密密切的合作，并且今天这个宣讲也是刚好离这个 deadline 比较近，所以我们会给 Ivy Compass 的学生有一周的这个 extension。嗯、呃，但是还是希望呃学生呢，如果感兴趣呢，还要尽快申请，因为我们的 mentor 的这个。呃 ，slots 会比较 limited， 我们是滚动录取的，就是如果学生，其实我们在三月份已经大概有录取到，呃，有两百多位学生，所以可能会，呃，只要学生录取，我们就会把这个 mentor 的 slot 优先 assign 给学生，所以呢，就是希望还是如果感兴趣的话，可以联系 Ivy Complex， 然后我们可以有一些呃 Q&A， 然后再呃，如果学学生感确定要参加的话，就可以尽快的提交申请。然后最后的最后呢，我再呃讲一下为什么呃要通过 Ivy Complex 和 Lumiere 这个 co-branding 的 research program 来申请。嗯、呃，第一个呢就是呃我们跟 Ivy Complex 因为有这个合作，所以嗯、呃、在这个申请的过程中呢，学生会首先被 match 给。给给学生会 match 到一位导师，那学生如果这时候不满意的嘛，不不满意的话，我们会跟学生有，嗯，可能二到两到三次可以 rematch 的机会，所以保证学生最后加入项目的时候呢，一定是选择到了自己最心仪的导师，不管是从 research interest 方向还是说从学校的方向，嗯，这个是我们可以保证的。然后第二点呢，就是，呃。在这个可能前期跟 Ivy Complex， 呃，在申请的时候就会就会跟我们沟通，然后我们会跟学生一些比较给学生一些比较这个呃独特的一些建议吧，希望他们可以去做更 unique 的 research topic， 甚至结合他的 personal interest 和这个 academic background 做一些呃可以比较符合学生 academic profile 的。呃，一些 research topics， 所以这个帮协助我们也会提供给 Ivy c o m p a s s 的学生。啊、呃，第三点就是，嗯、呃，在这个项目中，我们会有一位专门负责 Ivy c o m p a s s 学生的这个 program manager， 可能从中文讲就是这个班主任的角色，去呃全程的跟踪学生的进展。这个我们平常对所有的学生都会有这个角色去跟踪导师和学生的进展，保证他们 make progress， 呃 ，continuously。但是我们这个呃，给到 Ivy Compass 的这个 Program Manager 呢，他可能也会用运用到微信，所以呢，可以跟 Ivy Compass 这边的 Counselor， 包括我们家长，有一个更密切的 engagement， 然后 keep 呃，跟你们就实时回报，实时汇报这个学生的进展。对，所以这是呃，我们合作对于对于学生参加这个项目的一些优势。